Hello friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing, and today I'm using the Media Tool Set from Tim Holtz. This is the first time that I've tested it out, and I'll be using it with my glass mat. It comes with a scraper, and then I have a different scraper, so I'm just comparing those. It is a straight edge. One side has metal to cut, and the other side is just smooth for tracing or just to give you a T. It causes quite the reflection. And today we'll be making an envelope. One thing that I'm doing a little different that I don't always do in my envelope videos is first I'm cutting an 8 inch square just out of white paper. And I'm doing this for two reasons. First, I've never used the cutter before, uh, the Ulfa cutter rotary cutter with this t-bar and so I wanted to practice that and in fact I had to edit this a little bit because I wasn't using enough pressure at first and by the end of the envelope I feel like I got it under control it's also interesting because from the video angle I can tell when I don't get things straight but it's harder to tell from where I'm sitting so first I'm cutting this for two reasons to test out the cutter and then also if you cut your eight inch square first, and I just checked the mat and there's no marks. If you cut your eight inch square first, it's easier to picture where on the paper you will be making your envelope from. So if you wanna use paper with a partial pattern or something really interesting, or you have a directional paper, on my next video I'll be using a directional paper and showing you that. And I think you'll like the paper on this one. It's gonna be great. I have all these fall cards and I do have some craft envelopes. I just wanted something a little more interesting, especially on my hand delivered cards, uh, a card you take to a birthday party or maybe to a relative that's not feeling well. I just wanted to have something that's a little more interesting. So I'm just going through and marking possible ideas and looking at this giant paper pack and these leaves spoke to me. I thought this one would be really fun. And there's quite a few more in there so I can make more if I want. So by taking that piece of paper and laying it on the 12 by 12, I can think about how I wanted it. And when I do something like this, I could use just the part that's really dense with leaves, but I thought the interesting aspect of this would be to have a part where it was wide open. You could write on the envelope and it made a nice angle coming across it. So that's what I was thinking about as I was making the envelope. If you aren't experienced with making envelopes, just use solid colors or a pattern that's the same all the way across and not directional to get started. I love making envelopes because they're easy, they turn out great, and I've made lots of them. So they're super simple for me and it's just a mindless craft that you can do and relax, talk to your friends, watch TV, whatever. Chase the dogs in and out, whatever you need to do. If you're not as familiar with it, what I do right here is I take the card and I lay it on the piece of paper and I think, is that the way, would I want the leaves to come up from the bottom? And I decided, no, I wanted the leaves to come up from the side. And maybe if I do another card, I'll make them come from the bottom. Once you get to know the score marks and the shape of the way the paper comes out, it's really easy to figure that out. So if you don't see it obviously the first time, that's okay. Just watch these videos and practice. And you can make beautiful envelopes with printer paper if you want. You don't have to start with your 12 by 12 paper, especially if you're a beginning paper crafter and you don't have a lot of paper. You could go through your junk mail and find something. Junk mail has a lot of potential. Don't underestimate it. Okay, on this one, this is a, an interesting way that I did this. I scored it on the right side because all the really smart paper crafter people say you're supposed to do that and then it breaks down the fibers and it's easier to fold. Well, on an envelope, you're usually using thinner paper. So when you're using thinner paper like this, this is not the smartest way to do it because you can't really see and feel the fold lines as well. And uh, I have to be careful when I'm using thin paper about pushing it too hard because the scoring tool will poke through. 
The yellow one is what came with the board. The one I just grabbed now is my Teflon bone folder, which is a recent splurge and I'm in love with, but is not a value priced item necessarily. So if you're not a heavy duty paper crafter or you're really trying to be frugal, then maybe that's not the item for you. But I would probably recommend just just score it the other way. Put the the good side of the paper uh, down, and then you'll be able to see it better, and it'll fold. I, if you want the full tutorial on how to do an envelope, go back to my envelope playlist or watch my longer videos. Here, I'm just doing a fall envelope, maybe not in the absolute best order or explaining things. I also have this information on my blog at craftingandrelaxing.com. I did a tutorial about making envelopes and I have it there. And I try and do things in the right order when it's actual full tutorial. So here, for example, when you fold it up, it would be smarter to cut the square afterwards so it all lines up. But I just used my scissors and patched it. And look how cute it turned out. I love that envelope. Here I'm showing you that I overcut on the corner. I was probably uh, talking to a friend or something because I, I made this when I was crafting with a friend. So I just put a tiny bit of glue there to patch that up. You could put washi tape over it. You could do all sorts of things. Okay, so there's the finished envelope with the card and you can see I put it with a card that has leaves and I just love how it turns out. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.